video is filled with tons of DIY, tons of inspiration. Today I have for you the best 22 DIYs of 2022. All right, so I'm gonna take this board that I thrifted Gosh, it was several months ago, and I had actually done a Christmas DIY with it. It never sold, so I'm gonna re I removed the decal from it, and I'm gonna reuse it for this one. I'm gonna sand it down a bit. I'm gonna dust it, and then I'm going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. I'm using my chalk paint brush, and I love using these. I do have a few of them in my Amazon stores if you want to check it out. I did one coat vertically, and the other one is going horizontally because it gives it this beautiful texture that almost looks like fabric fabric and I love and you're going to see it here you can just see that texture and it's really really cool this board is such a good quality I love it's heavy duty and it's going to be one of those signs that I know either I'm going to use or I might sell in my booth but we'll see this is the first uh, reusable stencil I'm going to use it says I have found the one whom my soul loves it's a scripture from Song of Solomon 3 4 I am going to stencil the word one and the word loves in the Rustoleum milk paint and um, I think uh, Highland Blue it's called I am um, going to also then stencil the rest using Waverly chalk paint in the ink Look how beautiful the stencil looks so it the paint did lift up just a little bit but i'm not going to fix it because i am going to distress this to give it more of a farmhouse look and i don't mind imperfections i'm going to very lightly sand over the words using my electric sander and a 220 grit sandpaper then on the back i'm going to add two sawtooth hooks to uh, make sure that it's going to be secure i don't know again if i'm going to keep it or sell it but i may sell it in my booth but we shall see i love the way this one turned out it's so large so durable and it's just beautiful First inspiration comes from Magnolia and it's this beautiful rustic style window pane. I loved it. As soon as I saw it, I knew I could recreate it for a lot less. They have it for $116, so let's make it for a few dollars. We're going to start here with some one by. So these are one by four, one by twos. I'm also going to use a combination of other scrap little pieces of wood that I had, as well as bamboo um, sticks that I get. They're like flat dowels that I get on Amazon. I cut these already to size. Um, I really didn't even measure it because I just used what I had on hand and just to make sure that I had kind of like a rectangle look. So I am going to attach them using my staple gun. I know I have used and used pocket holes, but today I wanted to keep it simple and keep it to where you are inspired to recreate it yourself. So an electric, electric staple gun is what I use and it works really well for these. Now the key is you wanna put staples on each joint in the front as well as the back. You can also use some wood glue if you'd like. In this case, I didn't need it. It was pretty light. This center piece is actually a stake <laughs> from the garden center. I got it in the summer and I never used it, so I cut a piece to go right in the center. I'm gonna do one staple on each side. That's all that it needed as it was very snug. I'm going to use Verithane stain and this is in their briar smoke tone. And I'm just gonna do one coat on every side, included all the inside seams and the back. I forgot to show you how I created the like sideways stick. So I took some of these flat dials, they're bamboo in there from Amazon. I cut off about an inch of it, stained them, and then I just stapled them right to the back. Really easy, really simple. I'm gonna distress it just a little bit as the original has. It's a very rustic look and it has some distress parts of it. I decided to use some white paint. This is a Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. And I'm using a stenciling brush just to kind of add some dimension and some distress looks. I'm focusing on the edges and a little bit here and there. And that's it for this one. I love the way this one turned out. It's not exactly the same, but it's really darn close. And I only spent a few dollars. I love it. Over 
next Dollar Tree DIY, I am going to take these four little bowls that come four for a dollar and I'm going to hot glue them together. But then I decided to the middle portion, instead of hot gluing, I'm actually going to use my little wood burning tool because it's going to kind of solder it together. And instead of having that clumpy glue showing, I can just flatten out those edges and solder them together using the wood burning tool. And this worked out like magic if you don't have a wood burning tool i do have one on my amazon store which is linked down below to do something like this it is absolutely perfection and then the top one i'm just going to hot glue then i took it out to my garage and i spray painted with this flat spray paint by rustoleum it's in a white i only need one coat this is just to kind of give it like a like a first coat to have the paint have something to bond to and then i'm going to do two additional coats by hand using rustoleum chalk paint and the linen white and i'm going to leave it to dry pretty pretty well then i'm going to take one of these sunflower decals from dollar tree and i'm going to start at the top and work my way down this was actually the I wouldn't say the hardest part of all of my projects, but it wasn't like it was extremely hard. It just took a little bit more time. So I'm just going to start, as you can see, cutting with the exacto knife as needed, making slits, making sure things are nice and flat. And once I had it where I needed it, I think it turned out stunning. I love the colors. I love the shapes. And I think it's just absolutely beautiful. DIY. I'm going to take this Christmas sign that was left over from Christmas time from the Dollar Tree, remove the jute string and sand down all the glitter as well as roughen up the surface, wipe it really, really well. And then again, I'm going to give it two coats of Rustoleum chalk paint and the linen white. I'm going to take one of these cardboard picture frames from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to take these leftover succulent stickers. They're like wall decals I used earlier and these are leftover and I'm going to place them just around the rim of the frame. And they are going to be overlapping once again, but we are going to be cutting those off using my X-Acto knife. All right, so we're just finishing up cutting off the excess of this frame, and then we're going to move on to planking the board. The paint's already dry, and I'm just going to take a permanent marker that you can also find at the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to start planking. We're going to keep the same design that the original sign had, and we're just going to line those planks. And then I sanded down the edges with my sanding block just to smooth it out as well as give it a little bit of a distress. We're going to hot glue the frame right to the center, and then we are going to take one of these it's a three-part decal from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to take the one that says always wash your hands, place it right in the center. And then we are going to take some pink ribbon that I already had on hand. And I did whiten the little holes so that we can thread it through a lot easier. We're going to knot it in the front and that's it for this one. Another super easy, super quick one and such a fresh one. Actually, we have this one in our guest bathroom it look, and it looks beautiful. For this Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to start with this little bunny. It was so cute already to begin with, but I just wanted to give it a little bit more of a look that I actually like and want in my home. I removed everything from it, and then I'm going to take this Dollar General. It's like a planter, and I'm just going to just use it as a guide. So I am going to remove a little bit of the portion of the egg. So I don't want it to look like it has an egg. I want it to look like it's the bottom portion of the bunny. So we're just going to keep it round, but we are going to score it using the blade knife and then we're just going to snap it and then sand it to where it is smooth. You won't even tell that it was not there before. Now, I did leave the arms for now, but later on I do remove them because I decided I didn't want them. I am going to sand everything down using a palm sander and a 150 grit sandpaper to remove glitter, any glue that is on it. I did wipe it down really well and then I'm going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white then i'm going to use some painter's tape and i am going to for the first time ever create my own plaid look using painter's tape in different colors of gray 
So I made some vertical lines and I am using some Rhizolium chalk paint grays that I had already on hand. And I'm just going to start painting, drying, and keep adding some now horizontal tape. And then I am going to continue to show you how I did it and making sure that every gray that I use is a little darker than the last. Hey friends, I want to invite you to connect with me on social media. I am very active on social media and I recently just created a Facebook group where you can share, connect, and get inspired by other crafters. And I have everything linked down below, including my also my Instagram page. So check them out. Again, it is linked down below and I love to connect with you there as well. So now that I have everything painted, I'm just gonna remove all the tape, throw that out, and going to reveal the buffalo check. At this point, I have no clue if I did it right or not because I had no clue this was the first time I ever did it, but it actually turned out pretty good. It is kind of too sharp for me right now, so I did sand it down quite a bit just to soften it and give it a little bit more of a distressed farmhouse look. And as you can tell, I have already removed the little arms from it and it looks so much better. I wiped it down really well and I'm going to use some of these decal flowers that I love. It's one of my favorite ones to work with and I'm actually going to do another DIY with it later on. I'm going to place them, one towards the bottom, one towards the top. And then I'm going to remove the excess using my X-Acto knife. And then of course we need a little bunny tail. So I have some cotton little, they're not cotton swabs. They're just little pom-poms that I actually removed from a different DIY a while ago. And I'm just going to use them to hot glue a little tail on him. And look how cute. Oh my gosh. It's my favorite from today. I had to put it first because I just loved it. I loved the plaid. I don't even know if I did it right, but I like the look <laughs> and I think it turned out super cute. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take these three little garden signs and I'm going to remove the string that it had on them and I'm going to give each two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk pin in the linen white. And then after that, we're gonna start applying the decals. We're gonna use two different decals. We're gonna use the one that says Faith, Hope, Love, and we're gonna start applying those first. The Faith, we're gonna start applying towards the right side of the first plank. Then the Love is gonna to be towards the left side, and then the, wait, is it Hope? Yeah, Hope to the left, and then Love to the right. There you go. And then that way they all kind of kind of match but they are in different spots and then we're going to use that same floral decal that I used earlier and I'm going to use three of them and I'm going to place one flower on each board on the obviously opposite side of the word now the key here is to make sure that you are placing them in different angles so that you get different styles and different colors of the flower and then I'm just going to flip it over and cut the excess off once again using my exacto knife Okay, so now I flipped them over and I'm just going to add some of this ribbon that I got at Michael's a while ago. And it came with a bundle and I'm just going to hot glue and making sure that each plank is equally away from each other. And it's about an inch away from each other. So I am going to place the ribbon up one side, loop it on top, and then hot glue it on the other side. So that way it can hang like a little ladder. And then we are going to just add a little bit of antiquing wax. Now, maybe I should have done this before I added the ribbon, but it was no big deal. It worked out well. So I'm just going to add Waverly antiquing wax using a makeup sponge. And I'm just going to do it all around the edges, including the decal. I want this to look like it all goes together. I'm going to do that on all three planks. And then I'm going to take my brush with very little paint on it. And I'm just going to dry brush to mute down the antiquing wax a little bit. But I'm also going to dry brush the entire thing, including the words, including the flowers. And that way everything will have a little bit more of a distressed, naturally distressed kind of look that I really love. And this one is also one of my favorites today. I think it's stunning. It's large, it's beautiful, and it only costs a couple of dollars. I love it. All right, so for this spring DIY, I'm going to take this cutting board. It's like a decorative one that I got at Target Dollar Spot. On one side, it had those beautiful little flowers that were kind of heat burned on them, and I didn't want to mess with them. So we are going to work on the back side. I removed the sticker, sanded it down, dusted it really, really well, because I want this board to be double-sided. So we're going to work on one side, but we're going to leave the back side as is so that we can use it two ways. After everything was sanded down and smooth and dust free, I am going to dry brush heavily the one side we're going to work on. 
dry brushing simply means to put a little bit of paint on the brush and just swipe it on i did it pretty heavily on this side and waited for it to be fully dry i am now going to use this beautiful flower mesh reusable stencil from a maker studio and i am just going to place it right on top this mesh stencil is stunning and i do have a link down below in the description box where you can find this and many other stencils i'm going to use a maker studios gel art ink and a squeegee and i'm just going to start applying the ink right on it and then reveal the beautiful stenciling as i pull the stencil away isn't it beautiful i am going to heavily distress it though because i want this board to have a very vintage kind of farmhouse look so i am going to heavily distress everything now just to leave it as a detail i want this board to look like it's been around for a while i'm going to dust it really really well and then i'm going to take a piece of drop cloth that i've had for a while i'm just going to cut a piece that's going to be enough for what i need i'm going to flip it over and with a pencil i'm going to trace the bottom of the board this will give me a guide of where to cut now when i cut i am going to cut about a quarter of an inch maybe a little less under the line so i want the circle to be smaller than the board i did fold it later and cut it a little bit more because i wanted to see about a quarter of an inch on the bottom of the board i am going to apply it simply by applying some hot glue and then setting the cloth on the bottom of the board I noticed that some paint got on the back of the board because I wanted to leave it like this. I just sanded it down very lightly to remove the paint and that way nobody would ever know. <laughs> so I'm going to take this faux boxwood that I do get on Amazon and then this pink and white flower that I've had for a long time. It was left over on a pick. I'm just going to place it towards the right side and that's it. This board is beautiful. I love how spring it is. I love that you can actually remove the florals and make it feasible for any season. I think it's stunning. And of course, the back side is, was left as is. And I love the fact that it's two-sided. So we're going to start with some pink tissue paper and Dollar Tree has these in a bundle with other colors, but sometimes you can find them just pink and just like solid colors. But nonetheless, I'm going to start with this pink one and I'm going to cut them in little strips and then I'm going to cut them into like almost square, but more like a little rectangles. And I didn't measure. I just kind of eyed them out. But if I were to measure, I think they're about maybe three inches by four inches, give or take. Then I'm going to fold them into fours, just like you see I'm doing here. And then I'm going to take the sides that are not folded and I'm just going to round them off like a little wiggly and just round them off because we're going to make little tiny flowers and we are going to use them for a blossom tree i've seen several creators recently do this and i just thought oh my gosh i want to try this and i want to try it using dollar tree tissue paper so here we have it now we have all these little separate little pieces of tissue paper all cut now we're going to take a pencil just because it's what i had on hand and we're going to put one inside we're just going to scrunch it just a little bit and then we're going to place a second one right underneath and then we are going to kind of tighten the bottom and just be careful that you don't squish the flower too much so just as you hold the flower lightly just scrunch the bottom part into a really tight pointy part and that way you're going to have a little flower now I didn't do this part, but I highly suggest you add a little dot of hot glue in between each sheet of tissue paper because some of mine were falling off. So just so that you know that. Now, I created a whole bunch. Now we're going to create some little buds. So we're going to do the same thing. Cut these, round them off in the, in the top, and then we're just going to scrunch them up and we are going to make little buds. And these are just going to be one little sheet and we're actually going to scrunch this one a little tighter. So see how I'm like folding it and scrunching it. And it's just going to create little buds for our tree branch. And I think this just adds a little dimension, just a cute little addition of flowers. All right, so here's what I've got so far. I have all the little flowers. Look how cute 
cute they are. And the great thing is, is that they're not all the same. So that's just perfect. And then I have some buds right here, some smaller ones that we are going to hot glue to the branch. And I'll show you the branch here in just a second. So I went outside and I just cut off a branch out of my tree. I got really lucky that my leaves are not coming out yet for spring. And we're just going to start applying and hot gluing the little flowers. Now, you want to hot glue them specifically where there's a joint of two branches coming together or where there's a joint where you just see where, see like right there, like a little tiny branch was coming off. I just cut the branch off and then I just added a little bit of hot glue and I placed the flower. Now, because they are made from tissue paper, you don't need a, a lot of hot glue. Just a little dab will be perfect and i did that all over the tree and again just kind of eye it out and just kind of see where it needs to go if you need to step away from the branch and just kind of see where things are just want to make sure it's pleasing to the eye and it looks very natural and then with the little buds i try to place them more towards the upper part of each branch because that way it just looks like those are just the newest little flowers coming out in the beginning of the branches and there's one that i'm placing right now I thrifted this vase several months ago and I flipped it and I added this beautiful textured white tone. So it was perfect for this um, blossom tree. So I'm just going to add some plastic bags right inside to tighten everything and then some moss to kind of cover the bags. And I think this blossom tree turned out beautiful. It is my favorite from today. I have it right on my dining room table and I love, love it. Dollar Tree DIY. We're going to take a simple plain white tissue paper and we're going to cut it into strips. Actually, we're going to tear it. It doesn't not need to be just straight. It can just be torn. And then we are going to take this jar of sauce. It's like it had pasta sauce on it and it had, you know, the, the word uh, on it and it had glue on it. And it's okay because we are going to Mod Podge a lot of tissue paper on top to add a lot of texture. So we're going to add a lot of Mod Podge right on top of the jar. And then we're going to take the pieces of tissue paper and we're just going to place them, making sure that they are a lot of wrinkles. So here, gosh, you can go crazy with wrinkles you don't have to worry about it being perfect at all the more wrinkles the better it gets a little messy but it's fun and then we're just going to start applying more and more mod podge until the entire jar is covered i let this one dry overnight because it is a lot of glue that we added but look how beautiful it's looking a lot of texture everything hardened very nicely now i'm going to add some waverly chalk paint and the agave again one of my favorite colors it is just beautiful especially for summer and we're going to give it one coat a pretty heavy coat making sure that we get in all the little nooks and crannies of all this texture and then we're going to let it fully dry Once it was dry, it is time to seal everything. So I'm going to use the Rust-Oleum Chalked Sealer. It's just a top coat and it's a matte finish, which is what I wanted. But you can use whatever you have on hand. You can use a polyurethane, which I use all the time. But I just added one pretty heavy coat and then let it fully dry and then move on to the next step, which is adding some wax. Now the wax that I'm going to be using is by Dixie Belle is their best dang wax in the white. Let me just take a little piece of rag and then I'm just going to start applying it. Basically we just want to add a little bit of white wax so that all those textures and all those little nooks and crannies kind of pop and it's just add just so it just takes the jar into a whole new level i love using this white wax i don't use it enough but i should because it is beautiful i am going to have dixie bell um website down in the description box if you want to check them out they have really good products and um but yeah so i just did that all over the jar and look how beautiful it turned out that texture is priceless i can see this being on a larger sign beautiful For this Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to start with a square cutting board. And I was just showing you there how I 
tagged all of my boards prior to starting my projects to know what I was going to do with each one of them and make sure I had enough for all of my projects. So anyways, all right, so I'm going to take the first one here and then this Noel Christmas sign from the Dollar Tree that was left over from last year. And I'm just going to cut it into a size that fits the actual uh, cutting board it so happened it was the right size so i got really lucky this cutting mat is awesome it's from the dollar tree it's small but for small projects it's really cool so if you find one get it i'm going to use my palm sander and i'm going to sand down all the glitter and just rough up the surface just so that the paint can adhere a little better to it then i'm going to take a couple of these large painter sticks these are the ones that are for like 25 gallon buckets and you can also get them on amazon so i'm gonna get two of them and i'm gonna cut two of them on this uh the same size one for the bottom one for the top and then i'm gonna hot glue it to each end the reason why i'm doing the bottom and the top first is because then the two sides one are going to be a little smaller and i want to make sure that i have the right size so once i have those glued now i'm going to take the other stick and i'm just going to measure what i need to cut and cut two more of those using my miter saw if you do not have a miter saw although i highly recommend you start getting some power tools it would really really take your diys and crafting to a whole new level but if you don't have one that's okay you can always use a miter box and it should work really well i'm going to then staple just a couple of staples on each stick that way it's going to be very very secure and then it's time to start painting i'm just going to give it the whole thing inside and out two coats of rust-oleum chalk paint and the linen white i then took the glass cutting board and took it outside and spray painted it with the kind of like the frosted spray paint and that's it i just let it dry then i'm going to take some of this faux leather that i get on amazon i have black and brown but i wanted to keep it with the brown i cut about a one inch thick strip then i am going to cut half of that strip and then i'm going to cut half of the halves <laughs> so that i have four equal strips this is going to be put on the edges because the edges did not join really well you can tell that they're open i thought adding something to it which would have been a great idea anyways but i thought adding it would really cover that up and just just to camouflage it a little bit so i'm going to add them just by hot gluing them they're really light they're really easy to work with and then i'm going to take some thumbtacks and i'm going to remove the little pointy part and i'm just going to put a little dot of hot glue and place it right on there now i thought i can hammer it but because I didn't want, it was just staples and hot glue. I didn't want to hammer anything on the box. So just to be sure, I just added hot glue and then um, the thumbtacks right on top. Now I'm going to add some of these fairy lights. So we're going to keep it very simple. We're just going to open up the lights and then just kind of squish them in the box, making sure there's lights kind of like separate and just everywhere. And we're not even going to hot glue the little battery pack because it's not going to be seen. You're not going to be able to see it. So we're just going to put the frosted cutting board right on top of it and it's going to be a lighted box that you can place decor you can place jewelry you can place whatever you want i think it's beautiful it's definitely one of my favorites from today i love it For the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're gonna take another one of the square glass cutting boards. This time we're gonna use a design that I found on Design Space with my Cricut. I cut it and I cut it into a kind of like flipped. So you're not gonna be able to read it when you're looking at it right now, but you will once it's attached. So I'm just gonna add some transfer tape and then um, apply it to the back of the glass cutting board. So it's not gonna go on top. So I am going to just flip it over and then we're going to apply and making sure that it really is stuck in there. Now, this is a permanent vinyl, so I can wash it. I can it, it's not going to come off. It's really durable. So I'm just going to make sure that it's really adhered and then remove the transfer tape. Now, I noticed that the F in the beginning and the C, or I'm sorry, the yeah, the F in the beginning and the C in the end were right on top of that little dot that comes with the cutting board. So I'm just going to press it and then cut the excess around it. You couldn't even tell it was really seamless it really worked really well we're, what we're making i guess i should tell you is that we're making just a little spoon holder so when you're cooking you can put it next to your stove and place your utensils and i think it's stunning i love it love it love it i actually kept this one it's on my kitchen counter right next to the stove beautiful DIY another very easy and simple one we're going to take another one of the round glass cutting boards and then we're going to take this reusable stencil from a maker studio there are the mesh sticky ones that you can stick and unstick and reuse them 
as many times as you want it's a beautiful design so i'm just going to place it right on top and make sure that i stick it and really press down on it making sure that every inch of it is adhered to the cutting board and then we're going to take some of their gel art ink and this is in the hey y'all it's a really cool teal color perfect for summer and we are just going to start squeegeeing it on this is the squeegee that comes with it and it's so easy to use i am going to have a maker studios link in the description box if you want to take a look at their products they have so many stencil and the beautiful thing is they're reusable so if you do not have a cutting machine this is a really great way to go to make a custom decor so we're just going to squeegee the gel art ink all over the design and then it's so satisfying when you remove this stencil oh perfection this one turned out beautiful it almost has like a lace look to it so feminine so cute i have it here with a little bit of jewelry and a lipstick and i think it just looks so stinking cute but it can be used in any any area in your home for the next dollar tree hack we're going to start with this board that i got at the thrift store it was only 99 cents and it's solid wood and i thought it was a pretty good deal we're going to remove the back hooks because we're not going to use it horizontally we're actually going to use this one vertically i'm going to give it one coat of rust-oleum chalk paint in the linen white all right so we are going to take the sanding block and we're just going to sand down the edges just the edges very slightly for a farmhouse look once the paint was dry i'm going to wipe it really really well because we want to make sure that the stickers are going to stick so you do not want any dust these butterfly stickers are beautiful they're like 3d i can't believe they're a dollar 25 i seriously think it's one of the most beautiful stickers i have seen so we're going to start placing them upwards on this board we're going to start with some of the larger ones and then we're going to make our way up to the smaller ones now they're just two sizes large or small but i'm just going to make sure that they're also color wise are going to be staggered and just use kind of like common sense and just kind of see what that looks pleasing to the eye so we're just going to do that and that's it such an easy way to use these butterflies you can use them on birthday cards of course you can use them on paper crafting but i think using them as decor is just absolutely beautiful i love the way this one turned out so fresh so kind of like summery beautiful the next dollar tree hack we're gonna take this wooden house that i had for a long time now i got this one probably about two years ago at the target dollar spot it came i think two in a pack and i'm just going to give it one light fresh coat of white paint in front the back is still has that distressed look so we can always turn around and use the back as is but the front now has a fresh white coat we're going to take these rub on stickers that um, again you can find in that sticker area and we're just going to start pressing them so the way you do these rub on ones is just start pressing them with something hard you can use a popsicle stick right now i'm just using the back side of this cricut tool i don't know and i'm just placing them where i think they're going to look nice all over the front side of the wooden house and that's it again it can't get any easier now i didn't even have to paint the house it was just by choice because i just wanted it to have a brighter fresh look but overall adding these rub-on transfers just added so much freshness it is beautiful it is trendy and i love the way it turned out next dollar tree hack i am going to start with this medium size wire wreath form from the dollar tree and then we're going to bring a ton of flip-flops <laughs> how fun are these though right they're so colorful okay so i got six pairs and they're all very summery kind of complement each other in the color and they're all children's size again if you're going to do a larger one maybe you want to pick larger adult size so here i'm just dry fitting all the flip left to kind of see how i want to put them now i'm cutting about three to four inches strips of this wire you can find this at dollar tree in the car or automobile section i'm going to use a tiny little screwdriver to poke a couple of holes on the flip flap and then i'm going to thread the wire through those little holes and this is how we are going to attach the flip flaps to the wire because if you hot glue it believe me i tried it's just not it's it just spreads everywhere and it doesn't really attach so wire is the way to go
Another way you can do is possibly maybe adding some maybe foam to the um, wreath, but I think it's just too much. I think just wiring it to it is perfect. For the ones on the bottom, I actually added two wires. So I poked them twice and then make sure they attached very, very well. And that way the flip flops are not tilting back and forth. And I did that to all the ones on the first level of the flip flops. All right, so this is where I'm at. I've got the first four initial flip flops. Now I am going to start adding some of the ones that are going to kind of overlap. And I'm just kind of kind of eye out where we're at with how many. I know I have enough, but just so that all the colors are all nicely um, staggered, I guess is the word I'm looking for. And I have no repeat colors together back to back. But now we're going to place the solid pink ones. I'm just going to place them right in between some of these and that way we have no same colors together so they're all different so i think that's looking really good i'm not worried about the space because we're going to add something so i think that's pretty good for the second level i'm still poking holes but i'm only adding one wire and that seemed to work really well also because i am going to hot glue each flip-flop to each other so anywhere where you see a flip-flop where it overlaps the next I added just a little bit of hot glue and um, I, that way it was secure and hardened now I'm gonna take some of these florals from Walmart this is what a larger pick so it's just more bang for my buck but you can certainly find some beautiful florals right now at Dollar Tree that you can place and I'm just gonna place one small little pick I'm adding um, some hot glue to the bottom and then placing them in between each flip flop and here's me showing you how i added just a little hot glue a little goes a long way again these flip flops are very lightweight so a little bit is fine and then it's time to add something to the center so i found this floral it's like a wind flower you know like they'll spin in the wind and I removed the stem or the uh, wire stem that it had and then I hot glued it to the flip-flops I just added a little bit of hot glue wherever the petals touched a flip-flop and that seemed to work again it was very light I'm going to add another one of the sunflowers cut the stem very close to the flower added some hot glue and then placed it right in the center these faux grassy stems I do get on Amazon and I do have them on my Amazon store and these are there. But look how beautiful this wreath is. I seriously can't stand it. It is also pretty lightweight so it works really well. But I just love the colors and I love how summery it is. I think this one is my favorite today. Rounded wood peas from the Dollar Tree as well. We're going to tape the bottom portion as well as the top and we're going to paint the middle in white i am using rosoleum chalk paint in the linen white and i am using a brush that is currently one of my favorites it's one pretty good coat remove the tape i'm going to dry it speed it up here a little bit using my heat gun and then we're going to tape the white portion we're going to paint the top with the bare chalk paint and the cream the mint it's a beautiful kind of like a minty green color one coat was sufficient we're gonna dry then we're gonna use the rub-on transfer these are beautiful for a dollar 25 this has a very vintage very feminine look i love it i'm gonna fold it in half just to kind of find the middle and then i'm gonna cut it because we are going to transfer it onto the bottom of this wood round these rub-on transfers are really easy to use. You just remove the back and then you place them where you want to place them. And then you just have to have something harder to be able to rub it on with. I am using this little, it's like a little tiny spatula from Cricut, but you can use anything. You can use a popsicle stick, whatever you may have. And I have found that it's always better to rub and pull. You see how I'm pulling with one hand, rubbing with the other one. Works really well that way. So just a little trick for you. Then we're just going to add the other piece right next to it and do the same thing just rub on and then kind of lift as i'm pulling lift 
as an um, rubbing and that'll work really well. Now I didn't paint low enough with the white so once I had to transfer it I did have to put tape on it and then paint that little space there in between the transfer and the white paint just to make sure everything looks nice and even and um, that's it just give it that one coat make sure it was pretty um, covered and then remove the tape once everything was dry then it's time to start adding some of the words here I'm just going to use this leftover decal from the Dollar Tree you know I love my Dollar Tree decals I'm going to cut off the ends but we're going to reuse them here in just a quick second this I believe has a more of a metallic pink color I think it worked really well with the transfer because it did have that pink in it i'm just going to place it right in the center and then the leftover little wiggly lines we're just going to place them one on the top one on the bottom just to kind of fill in some of that white spots and it did really well once i had that place where i wanted then it's starting to play some jute string um this one i got uh, i think it was dollar tree yeah they have this one with the white they also have a red and white and then they also have a blue and white and i got them all and um, I, that this one worked really well for this one. And then we're just going to add some greenery and we're going to hot glue it. This is from Walmart and nothing fancy. We're just going to put greenery one to each side. And then in the center, I'm just going to place some pink flowers that I got at Dollar Tree. And they're just left over from another project. So I'm just going to cut them really close to the flower and then hot glue them to the center and that's about it for this one it's actually one of my favorites which i which is probably why i placed it first because i love the way it turned out i think it's absolutely stunning it's very bright cheery feminine and that rub-on transfer holy smokes it's one of my favorites so worth it for dollar 25. the next Dollar Tree hack. I'm going to start with this craft paper. This is from one of those booklets that you can find at Hobby Lobby, Michaels. You can find them pretty much anywhere. I'm going to cut a piece here. We're going to make a greeting card. I made a greeting card not long ago using Dollar Tree stickers and I thought it'd be fun to do one with a rub-on transfer. So I am going to fold it in half and then I'm going to use another piece of the um, craft paper but this time we're going to cut it smaller than the front of the greeting card and we're going to flip it to the white side then this is another beautiful rub-on transfer from dollar tree holy smokes it's beautiful i love the colors i love the style and i'm just going to cut off the excess we're going to save them for another project maybe in the future but that's how beautiful this is you can cut it to the size you need and then save the parts that you're not going to use for another project really really cool all right so i'm just going to place that on top and once again it's going to be as easy as just rubbing it and then of course i'm going to do the whole lift and rub as i go because it just works really really well All right, so now it's time to add some glue to the back of the piece of paper. This is just to make sure that it adheres to the front of the card. And I'm just using this glue stick, but you can use any glue you have on hand. You can even use double-sided tape would work. So I'm just going to place it there. And then I am going to roll it just a little bit just to make sure that it's nicely adhered. Then I'm going to add a little bit of ribbon to the edges. So right where both papers meet, I just thought it needed a little something. And this ribbon came in a bundle from Michaels and it's just beautiful. This is all I have with this design let me tell you i did not even measure it but i was praying i would have enough and little did i know it was actually perfect size i was like this never works like this but yeah i had maybe three quarters of it not even like a one quarter of an inch left from the ribbon crazy anyways a little bit of glue on the edge placing the ribbon on top very easy these tiny little flowers are from a bundle that i got recently at walmart they're having some beautiful summer and spring florals very inexpensive love 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 these ones and i'm just going to cut two of the smaller ones and then this little leaf i'm just going to cut a little smaller and then i'm going to hot glue it right underneath the flowers and this greeting art is absolutely stunning is another one of my favorites my daughter actually gave it to her teacher for her last day of school and it was just beautiful love it this 
food run I actually got on Amazon as a set. It came in a pack of like 10 or so, but Dollar Tree does carry them. So if you find them there, grab a few because they go fast. I am going to be using a decal that I recently found and I just kind of measured the center and taped around it. Then I'm going to paint that center portion using Rust-Oleum, chalk paint and the linen white and then remove the tape and just kind of dry it with the heat gun because it just goes a little faster. Once it was dry, it's time to bring in the sanding block and just sand down the painted area as well as the sides just to make sure everything is nice and smooth. And of course, you wanna make sure everything is dusted and clean so that the wallpaper can stick. This brick style wallpaper is beautiful. I can't believe these are $1.25 at the Dollar Tree. I folded it in half long ways and I'm just going to cut it right down the line. This is going to give me equal sizes so that I can place them on the bottom and the top of the white line. It is just like its title says, peel and stick. You just remove the backing from it, place it where you want to place it, and then stick it just like a sticker. So I'm going to place it on the top, on the bottom, then I'm going to flip it over and I am going to use an X-Acto knife to cut out the excess wallpaper. Using my sanding block, I'm just going to sand down the edges. This technique really helps that sticker or the wallpaper really smooth out the edges around the wood piece or around the piece that you are covering. I love this technique. I highly recommend it. So here's the peel and stick that I recently found. It says be the sunshine. It's beautiful. It's bright. And I just think it complements that brick color really well. So I'm just going to place it right in the center and I'm going to make sure that it's nice and stuck on there. Then it's time to add some greenery. This greenery I got, I believe it was at at home. It's one of those that really dangles down. I cut off a branch that was just kind of dangling enough to the side and then I cut a smaller one to just fill in that top portion. I'm going to mark a couple of dots where I need to drill a couple of holes. I just figured it would be easier to make sure that it is stuck on there with some jute string rather than just hot glue. Although I did add some hot glue to make sure it is really, really secure, but adding the jute string and tying it on the back really helps that greenery stick on there very well. Then I just made sure that the leaves and everything just kind of falls the way I want them to fall. Then I'm going to bring in this sunflower. I think it's beautiful. It's leftover from a pick that I had. I'm going to cut the excess stem from the back and I'm going to add plenty of hot glue and then just stick it right there where all the stems come together. And that's it. I added a small jute string in the back to hang it, but I think it's stunning. I love that wallpaper. It's so easy to work with and it is absolutely beautiful. pizza pan that is from Dollar Tree. I'm sure you've seen many crafts done with pizza pans, but today I want to do something a little different. We're going to use two of their vinyl. We're going to use this beautiful floral one. I was obsessed when I saw it through the little window and as I pulled it out, I was just in love. The colors are vibrant and the style is just stunning. So I'm going to cut a piece to cover half of the pizza pan and we're going to do the same thing with the white one. But first we're going to start removing the vinyl. My first impression was that it was actually a little thicker than what I thought it would be. So that's a good thing, right? <laughs> Throughout the video, I'm going to give you my honest opinion on not just the vinyl, but some of the supplies like this one here is one of the scrapers that you can find at Dollar Tree for $1.25. This one, I wanted to try it out. It's pretty sturdy, good quality, and I actually thought it was pretty comparable to some expensive ones. So yay on that one. I'm just going to keep scraping it and applying it to one half and then I'm going to use the exacto knife to cut off the excess after I really really make sure that I just lined that corner very closely to make it easier for the exacto knife to slide through that corner and cut the excess. And then we're going to repeat the process using the white vinyl on the opposite side and I just overlapped it very little in the center. All right. 
All right, so I'm just gonna remove the excess white vinyl just like I did with the floral one. And it was actually quite easy. The vinyl cuts really well. And I think both of them have the same texture except for the white one. Maybe it's a little thicker. Maybe it was just me, but I just felt like it was just a little thicker than the floral one. I'm gonna grab some of this eucalyptus picks that I get at Walmart and I'm gonna cut four little branches off of it. Then I'm gonna tie it in the middle and secure with some jute white string that I have on hand and secure it with hot glue. And then we're gonna place some hot glue towards the center at the top and that way it'll add texture and some greenery that I just love. I'm gonna loop some jute string to the back of it. I'm gonna hot glue it and tape it just to secure it and that way we can hang it from but I love this one. It's gonna sound like a little dry erase board on one side and a magnetic maybe folder or key holder. Love it. This basket is stunning. I'm sure you've seen them while you were at Dollar Tree and I'm so excited to find one. I actually found this rectangle one as well as a round one, but we're gonna start with this one and I'm just gonna take this floral foam from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna cut a piece off of it that's the same width or the same height as the basket. I am then going to poke a couple of holes using my screwdriver, but you can use whatever you have on hand. And this is so that we can place one zip tie so that we can attach it to the basket. I thought this would be the best way to attach it. That way we can put all of our florals right on the foam. Because the basket is pretty much see-through all around, I did want to add some of this Spanish moss all around the edges as well as the top of it. That way it'll be covered up and when we place florals, we're not worried about seeing that white foam. So I'm just going to add a couple of drops here and there of hot glue and just place the moss all around it. And then it's time to start placing some florals. I'm going to start with this eucalyptus pick that I get at Walmart. A lot of times these are more bang for your book when you get them at Walmart. So don't be afraid to pay them a visit and check their floral section out. So I'm just going to place some of these picks all over the foam. It looks kind of crazy right now, but it'll take shape. These little sunflowers I'm obsessed with with Dollar Tree. I love them. I just feel like they're so high-end looking and so large. So I'm just going to place one right in the middle, right there in the front. And then these leafy picks, I love. They add so much color and they're just great fillers when you're doing any arrangement. So I'm just going to place them all around as well as these little orange ones. And I'm just going to start placing here and there. All of these are from Dollar Tree except for the eucalyptus pick. But all of these are from Dollar Tree, so yay for that all right this little foam pumpkin of course you've seen them i'm going to use the bottom portion of this pick just so that i have something to place underneath the pumpkin so that i can then place it right on the foam i poked a hole added some hot glue placed the little pick there and then i'm going to be able to just stick it right on to the foam and it'll be nice and secure and i did the same thing with the smaller one And that's about it for this one. I gotta tell you, it's definitely one of my favorites. I love this as an alternative to a regular wreath. It will look great on a front door. I absolutely love it. This next Dollar Tree DIY, I love this wreath form. It is already golden tone, which is beautiful just as is if you wanted to leave it, but we are going to be covering it up with this fabric. This fabric little bundle is from Dollar Tree. You can find these currently with different designs and different colors. Recently, I did a video with all kinds of these fabrics and how you can use them for different crafts. So check it out. I'll have it linked down below. I cut the piece into several strips of the fabric and then I'm just gonna start hot gluing it all around the wreath form, making sure that it's overlapping one with each other so that it's the entire thing it's covered. At the end, you just want to make sure that the part that you are going to be hot gluing at the end, it's going to be the part where you're going to be placing any decorations or florals or you can just make sure that it ends on the back side. This little home decor sign is so stinking cute. I got it at Dollar Tree, but the little greenery could have seen better days. So I removed the whole thing as best as I could. And then I'm gonna take this little 
wreath form it's like a grapevine one it's tiny it's so small i get them on amazon but i'm sure you can find them at michael's i have not seen them at dollar tree but it's really cute and they're very versatile i'm going to take these little green boxwood that i also get on amazon i'm just going to start placing them and what i'm doing is i am placing the bottom portion of the boxwood pick and then the top one i'm removing the little greenery from it so that i have a pointy side and then i'm going to thread that through the wire of the wreath form and then putting back that little greenery on top. That way, it just has a round look. I'm going to place some of these orange flowers from a Dollar Tree and just place them all around. Again, all facing towards the same side. And I'm going to leave it like this. I'm not going to add too much because it is a small wreath. And I want to make sure that it's not going to be overly packed with decor. But I thought this was perfect. I'm not going to do anything to the actual home part of it, like the HME, because it looks actually really good against the yellow of the wreath form so i'm just going to hot glue by adding hot glue right where the home meets the fabric and that's it for this one i did add some ribbon to the top so that we can hang the wreath now you know that if you put any florals on one side of the wreath you do have to make sure that the ribbon is placed where it needs to be not necessarily in the center because it will tilt on you so there's what i'm doing here right now i'm just making sure that i have the ribbon where it needs to be I'm going to secure it with hot glue and make sure that I have enough so that we can hang on a door or on a wall or wherever we want to place this one. But I got to say, I love this wreath. I love that it's different and I love that pretty much everything came from Dollar Tree except for the little tiny boxwood. But of course, you can use any greenery from Dollar Tree and even the ribbon is from there. I love it. tree christmas hack i am going to take this gnome sign it's already very pretty as it is but you know me i like to customize the decor so we're going to remove everything from it and we're going to sand it down you can use a sanding block but i'm going to use my electric sander because it's quicker and way more effective this is to remove all the glitter as well as scuff off the surface so that the paint adheres very well. I'm gonna clean it up really well, and then I'm gonna give it one and a half coats of Waverly Chalk Paint in the white, but only in the edges, because we're not gonna need the middle portion covered. Once it was completely dry, I am going to take this beautiful Santa belt wrapping paper. I loved it. I might even go back because I might use this one for my own Christmas gifts this year. I'm going to tear the edges. I love using this technique. I've used it many times before. Sometimes I just love that tear look. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to cut it, leaving about maybe about a half an inch on each side, give or take. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to spray it with this Elmer's, not Elmer's, ha, Gorilla Adhesive Spray. And we're going to place it right in the center. This works so awesome. I usually use Elmer's, which is why I said Elmer's. But using this one, I realize this is so much better. And I do have in my Amazon store, which is always linked down below. Using my Cricut, I did cut out the phrase ho 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 because it's very appropriate for the sign and the wrapping paper we're using. I'm going to use some transfer tape and this is where things kind of went downhill for me. I forgot that I am dealing with very thin wrapping paper. Yep, you guessed it. It literally tore me. I thought I can fix it. I thought, hey, I can make this work. No. So I ended up just tearing it out. I was so frustrated. So needless to say, I removed the whole thing off, except for this one little part, which really adhered like crazy good. Then I did the whole thing all over again. I'm not going to show you, but here I am placing it right on top. This time, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use the letters just like stickers, and I'm going to place them. Now, I decided to kind of place the ho-ho-ho towards the left side of the board, because I figured I'd kind of add a little bit of greenery and embellishments to the right side. And that's exactly what I did. Once I had the words right on it, I started placing some full greenery picks from Amazon that I usually get during this time of the year because they're just such a good deal and great quality. I'm just going to hot glue them in place and then I'm just going to add a couple extra little things like a bell and a little pine cone. And of course we need something to hang it with so this beautiful red and gold ribbon is i believe from dollar tree i think i got it at dollar tree i'm just gonna hot glue it and tape it to the back and that's it such a beautiful custom sign i love that it says ho 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 and i love this wrapping paper it's my favorite oh. 
what a great year it was. And I have another video here with tons more of inspiration for you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later and have a blessed day. Bye.